The four functions are somewhat like the four points of a compass. They are just as arbitrary and just as indispensable. Following the short videos that I've posted about a bunch of type topics, I like also having an option to going a little deeper. That way there might be something for everyone. So with this video, I'm going to go a little deeper into the thinking and feeling functions. And yes, both are rational functions as described by Carl Jung, because they involve a conscious decision-making process. They involve reflective, thinking and evaluating based on objective and or subjective values. And uh, the book that he wrote, this is his Psychologische Typen, the English translation was published in 1923, the German translation was actually published in 1921, it's a centennial celebration now. And I thought, why not go into a little bit of the history and use the words of the man himself. I'm going to read you the definitions that he wrote about the different thinking and feeling functions and see what you make of them. I want to put a little context around it because it was a hundred years ago. The gender roles, for example, were very different and he describes the feeling function as pertaining to a woman and the thinking function as pertaining to a man, so very binary. But basically his theory came about after 20 years of observing clients in his psychoanalyst practice. Starting with a couple of caveats, he says that the classification of types according to introversion and extraversion and the four basic functions is not the only one, obviously. It is still very practical, though he described it. the four functions are somewhat like the four points of a compass. They are just as arbitrary and just as indispensable. Nothing prevents our shifting the cardinal points as many degrees as we like in one direction or the other, or giving them different names. It is merely a question of convention and intelligibility. But one thing I must confess, I would not for anything dispense with the compass on my psychological voyages of discovery. With that in mind, we're going to hold it lightly and we're going to remember that these were written a hundred years ago. What he says about the extrovert thinking type is that this type will, by definition, be a man whose constant endeavor, insofar of course as he is a pure type, is to make all his activities dependent on intellectual conclusions, which in the last resort are always oriented by objective data, whether these be external facts or generally accepted ideas. This type of man elevates objective reality or an objectively oriented intellectual formula into the ruling principle, not only for himself, but for his whole environment. The extroverted thinking type would be in your type code ESTJ or ENTJ. And then the extroverted feeling type is described as a woman who uses feeling as her guiding line. Extroverted feeling has detached itself as much as possible from the subjective factor and subordinated itself entirely to the influence of the object. Even when it appears not to be qualified by a concrete object, it is nonetheless still under the spell of traditional or generally accepted values of some kind. And if that seems convoluted, I think the next description is going to help make it a little clearer. A painting, for instance, is called beautiful because a painting hung in a drawing room and bearing a well-known signature is generally assumed to be beautiful, or because to call it hideous would presumably offend the family or its fortunate possessor, or because the visitor wants to create a pleasant feeling atmosphere for which purpose everything must be felt as agreeable. The extroverted feeling types are ESFJ and ENFJ. Now the introverted thinking type. External facts are not the aim and origin of this thinking, though the introvert would often like to make his thinking appear so. It begins with the subject and leads back to the subject, far though it may range into the realm of actual reality. It formulates questions and creates theories. It opens up new prospects and insights. But with regard to facts, its attitude is one of reserve. What seems to it of paramount importance is the development and presentation of the subjective idea of the initial symbolic image hovering darkly before the mind's eye. 
So introverted thinking is much more concerned with timeless theories and universal principles is what that means. The introverted thinking types are ISTP and INTP. And the introverted feeling type or the introverted feeling function, Jung says, is continually seeking an image which has no existence in reality, but which it has seen in a kind of vision. It glides unheedingly over all objects that do not fit in with its aim. It strives after inner intensity for which the objects serve at most as a stimulus. The depth of this feeling can only be guessed. It can never be clearly grasped. It makes people silent and difficult to access. It shrinks back like a violet from the brute nature of the object in order to fill the depths of the subject. It comes out with negative judgments or assumes an air of profound indifference as a means of defense. Introverted feeling types, for instance, very often form the ethical backbone of a group without irritating the others by preaching moral or ethical precepts. They themselves have such correct standards of ethical values that they secretly emanate a positive influence on those around them. One has to behave correctly because they have the right kind of value standard, which always suggestively forces one to be decent if they are present. Their differentiated introverted feeling sees what is inwardly the really important factors. The introverted feeling types are I, S, FP and INFP and they are very much concerned with what is important here, what is important to me, what is authentic. The people that I know with INFP preferences are very concerned about living an authentic life and living really according to that inner compass. And these are the functions as described by Carl Jung himself a hundred years ago. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>